Well, it's one step forward, two steps back on the U.S.-North Korea summit, which the world has been anticipating. President Donald Trump has welcomed the warm and productive statement from North Korea in reaction to him canceling a summit with Kim Jong-un. Trump had blamed Pyongyang's tremendous anger and open hostility as he pulled out of next month's meeting in Singapore, saying the world had lost a great opportunity for lasting peace. But the two sides say no. Now, all is not lost. And with us in studio is Joel Labby, who is an Asia-Pacific reporter, and he joins us now to discuss this more. Joel, thank you for being with us. Uh, I had put this question to our diplomatic uh, correspondent before during the show, and it seems almost impossible to make sense of that diplomatic back and forth between Trump and Kim. Are they just trying to see who will be the first, who will break? and? show that he needs the summit more than the other. It's been a really awkward 24 or 48 hours, hasn't it? I think both leaders having never actually met and conducting all their diplomacy through uh, their, their foreign ministers are still trying to fill each other out. And we know with Donald Trump, he uh, can be fairly abrasive, fairly brash and treats a lot of these meetings as if they were a business deal. And if he doesn't like what he sees, then he's not going to go through with it. And I think this is what has happened here. The rhetoric has uh, become increasingly agitating from the North Korean side over the last week or so. And Trump is ultimately in a position of power here. He doesn't need to meet with North Korea as much as North Korea needs to meet with the United States, needs to have sanctions lifted and needs to have some sort of economic reprieve. So Trump, I think he's, he's won this round here. Uh, he, he holds the cards now. And We've seen from how North Korea has handled the situation today with a very subdued statement that uh, perhaps they acknowledge that he has he's called their bluff here. And of course, uh, Joel Trump addressed the summit uh, earlier today. Let's take a listen to what the president had to say. No, no, we'll see what happens. It could even be the 12th. We're talking to them now. They very much want to do it. We'd like to do it. We're going to see what happens. What? Everybody plays games. You know that. And Joel, we've just heard the president speaking then. So what do you make of what he had to say? Yeah, everybody plays <laughs> games. And I think that that goes back to my earlier point that this is as much a negotiation for uh, Trump as it is for the North Koreans. And it's interesting to see the sort of language that's being used now, because yesterday uh, during the White House briefing there, the, um, a senior official there was listing a, a litany of, uh, of failures on North Korea's part over the past fortnight since the inter-Korea summit, the things that they promised and haven't delivered on, things like the uh, experts going over to the nuclear test site to watch the dismantling, that never happened. Uh, also, uh, an organisation sent by uh, the White House to Singapore to actually coordinate the early stages of this summit, the North Koreans apparently stood them up. Uh, they went through a long list of, uh, of grievances that they had with Pyongyang and, and clear Clearly, while the, uh, they're, they're not in a position to take this summit forward yet, uh, this, this will be a win for Trump no matter what the results. So uh, he's happy to meet with Kim Jong-un. I guess he's playing the wait and see game as well. And Joel, you're a reporter um, on the Asia Pacific region. So tell us what's it looking like from that side, especially, you know, China and um, South Korea? Particularly interesting, actually, with South Korea and, and Japan, the other regional power that needs to be addressed there. Uh, South Korea was apparently caught off guard by this, and the White House was very coy in addressing whether or not they actually told the South Koreans before making this announcement yesterday. Uh, this is this could be a big political backlash in the South, because Moon Jae-in staked a lot of his political gamesmanship on making sure that this summit worked. He's got local elections coming up next month as well. And the South Koreans are looking at this not only as a missed opportunity for the United States, but also questioning whether they can trust their Western allies as well. And uh, from a local perspective, this could be massive. Japan's looking at it saying, we aren't quite sure what is going to happen and regional stability is key for them. And China, surprisingly, has taken a, a, a pretty docile approach to this. Uh, they've, they've said that uh, they're still hopeful, they're playing this wait and see game. It didn't even make the front pages of the newspapers there. Let's explain why that's surprising, Joel, that China is taking a more do docile response. Of course, we all expected China mm. to continue backing this summit more aggressively. They have very little to lose whichever way this falls. Uh, behind the scenes, Xi Jinping has been meeting with Kim Jong-un. We know that twice and, and a host of other times he's met with North Korean diplomats. Uh, the way that China is seeing it is they, they don't want to play 
mediator on the world stage here. North Korea is, uh, it can be, I suppose, I want to use layman's terms, a bit of a pest for them uh, when it comes to the nuclear tests and missile launches that have gone over the past few years. They want stability as well. They don't want to be seen as the one that is pulling the strings, though at least uh, behind the scenes maybe, but not publicly. So for them, the United States and North Korea are the ones that are gambling here, not them. They're just happy to see how it plays out. And back in Pyongyang, Joel, for the um, recent few months, we've seen a lot of steps taken by the regime that have been surprising on the international mm -hmm. stage. Of course, the most recent one, the meeting with the South Korean president, highly mm -hmm. symbolic, celebrated all over the world. But is it uh, the dismantling, of course, of the nuclear site? But is it likely that Trump can uh, get out of Kim everything he has laid out, the dismantling of completely um, uh, North Korea's nuclear cap capabilities and more demands? It's a big question here for Trump because the United States has never changed its, changed its tune on what it wants from North Korea, complete denuclearization. The North Koreans have been interpreting that slightly differently. The fact that no sitting US president has ever met a leader of North Korea, uh, there's no precedent for this. So it's very difficult to know how this meeting will play out. And I think part of the reason, and, and the White House has been uh, fairly clear in saying that they weren't quite sure what to expect from any meeting in the first place. The fact that they couldn't even get the ground rules ready for this summit to go ahead, uh, it leaves a lot of questions. If the summit does go ahead, is this going to be just a, a a photo opportunity for the newspapers and, and world media with very little done. You've got to consider as well Kim Jong-un. He has to take this back and sell it to his people. It may look good for Western powers to have denuclearization, but the North Koreans have been... Uh, they've, they've only known one history. And to give up their nuclear power in the face of uh, an enemy that they've uh, put up on the world stage for so long, it's a big call for Kim. Can he actually deliver on it? So, Joel, after the show, should we go online and book some tickets to Singapore for June 12? I wouldn't be so hopeful. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> uh, Joel, of course, if the meeting doesn't take place, and we are all hoping even for a news worth uh, a value that it does, but if it doesn't, what options does the U.S. have? More sanctions on North Korea? They haven't been too impressed with sanctions before. Yeah, uh, the language from the White House, though, is that they will impose maximum pressure on Pyongyang. And... Just judging by the North Korean response today, as I said earlier, the, the state media response after two weeks of, of very harsh rhetoric towards the vice president, towards uh, John Bolton, the national security advisor, they're saying we want to talk any time, in any form, and it's extremely, it's extremely regrettable that the summit didn't go ahead. Very odd language from a nation that has been uh, talking up its capabilities over the past couple of weeks. So I think there will be another summit, uh, maybe not for another six to 12 months, but uh, Trump has laid the groundwork here. He knows he's not going to take any, any sort of uh, lip service from the North Korean leader anymore. And I think that they've actually acknowledged that now based on what we've seen in the past 24 hours. And mm -hmm. it seems we've become accustomed to um, shocking statements from nations uh, around the world uh, about have. this topic. <laughs> Joe Labby.